Hello web developers, uh, welcome to the project walkthrough for the basic markup project. This is a part of Watts 3010, and that's the introduction to web development course here at Seattle University. Uh, I'm Sean, and I am excited to walk through this project with you. So let's jump right into things. If we click that link to the starter repo, we can see that this brings us to another SU web dev starter repository. Uh, so I encourage you to read through this entire uh, readme file. It outlines everything that we need to do here. Uh, basically, we will be looking at a document which is provided here in a PDF format. And um, we will be trying to reproduce that in a web page. And to do that, we will meet these requirements here, uh, which means reviewing the PDF. We're going to edit the index.html file and we're going to try to recreate the structure of the PDF itself. Uh, we're going to keep an eye out for all the details in the document so that we catch uh, all of the italics, all of the asterisks and things like that. Uh, we're going to add images to the file and then um, we're going to deploy our code so that other people can view it online. Uh, and then, of course, there are some stretch goals. Uh, you could add meta tags uh, to make uh, you know different information about your page known to the browser. Uh, you could add open graph metadata tags, which are really good and are the things that get read when you share on a social network or whatnot. Um, it's, a, it's a getting the title of the page and the description of the page and an image for the page, things like that. Um, or you could use a link tag and jump into style sheets, which we'll be exploring next week. Um, so feel free to uh, you know, get a jump start on that. Um, but of course, like all of our assignments, the first thing that we're going to do is fork a copy of this repository into our own personal account. So I'm going to fork this. And then once I fork it, I'm going to actually open up uh, the raw version of the PDF. And so GitHub will preview PDFs for you. So we can click here and GitHub will preview this for, um, for us. But this is not, um, this doesn't have everything. Like we can't click these links, right? And that's, that's a problem because we need to find out where these links go so that we know where to point the link to. So to get the full PDF, we just click the download button here and it gives us the PDF. Let me put this window more within our view here. And um, so we can see the PDF there. And this is what we're trying to reproduce on the page. So we want, you know, some kind of title up here. Uh, we want these things on individual lines. We want, um, you know, an image up here. We want a section for syllabus. Um, we want a section for opinion. Uh, and then we want, um, you know, to add like some links and stuff and some other picture here and uh, so forth and, you know, some lists there. So these are all really standard elements that we have often in web pages uh, just to lay out content and make it readable for the user. And we want to reproduce this layout in our, uh, our, our page online here. So that's what we're going to um, work towards. Let's go ahead and jump into Code Envy and start working in this repository. So if I go back into Code Envy, you might have to log in and it might have to reboot your, your workspace. But then um, if we go under workspace here, we can hit import project. And that's what we want to do next. And we want to select GitHub. And then we want to click load repo, which is, this is all what we did in the last project as well. And it will then uh, show us all of the accounts that we have access to. I'm going to go to my personal account and I'm going to look for the Watts 3010 basic markup assignment. That's what we're working on here. And I am going to import that. So that will clone that repository from GitHub. It will ask me what project configuration I want to use. I can just use blank because it's just a simple uh, static website. Static meaning the files don't change or need to be manipulated before they get delivered to the user. And then I can twirl down uh, 
my directory and I can see all the files inside of my directory. Now notice that my previous project is still here in my Projects Explorer sidebar. And I could preview either or both of these projects at the same time. I could work on them whichever way. Uh, but these directories actually contain the Git repository. And so when I commit and push these files, they're going to go to the basic markup repository. If I were in this directory and I committed and pushed files, they would go to the hello world directory. So uh, they are using the separate Git repositories, even though you know they are in the same Projects Explorer. I, ha I can use them in my same workspace. So think of these as individual directories on a computer with projects inside of each directory. Uh, so if I open up the index.html file, you notice that I can see here let me pull the terminal down um, a whole bunch here so that I can see as much as possible. So you notice that I can see here that it uh, it kind of looks a bit normal, right? Like I, you know, I have the heading and I have all of this stuff here. But if I preview this page, you notice that it's just a giant block of text, and this is because uh, HTML and browsers when they interpret HTML only recognizes one space and anything beyond one space is just disregarded so all of this white space that we have here that makes this readable all these new lines and everything that make this readable they don't translate when the browser actually interprets this and that's why we need the HTML markup so we actually need to tell the browser that we want say for example uh, this to be you know some kind of uh, heading so we could start this out with this maybe this is an h3 because it's it's not that important but it's sort of important um, and then we can have an h1 here because this is really uh, that's really the most important part so so that is the most important title and that and what we would expect these are heading tags and we, we wrap the content in the tags. So you notice that when I go into this content, it highlights the opening and closing tags. And I realize that highlight isn't the best color, but um, there you go. <laughs> I, I haven't figured out how to change that yet. We'll talk a little bit about edit, altering this environment soon. Um, but if I, if I were to save that, which it, it's, I've got autosave turned on, it's on by default. And I go back to my preview here and I refresh. You notice now I have a smaller heading up here because H3 is smaller than H1. H1 is the largest and most important heading. So I have it right here. And then all the rest of the content just goes back to being the big wall of text. And what's going on there is that I've added HTML tags around these things, but not around the other content. So if I wanted to, I could add a paragraph tag here. And that, um, that will wrap that line and it saved that and so if I go over here and refresh my browser now that gets popped up and basically I just continue to go through all of the content and I can actually break out all of this um, information here so I'm going to go ahead and just keep moving through and um, formatting things as they come and we'll just deal with it as they come so the first thing uh, and of course what we can keep doing too is we can keep looking back at this and see sort of how it looks. So this actually looks like it should have been included in the H1. So I might have wrapped that a little bit wrong. So maybe I get rid of these paragraph tags and I can move this closing H1 so that it goes after this line. And then to make it go on a separate line, I can use the BR tag, which is a line break. And so what that does is that makes a separate line break that doesn't have the white space between it. Normal paragraphs and block elements have a little white space between them by default. So that's saved. So if I refresh this, what I should see is that we have a big title, but it goes across two lines because there's this BR there. And I can see that that's exactly what the browser sees because I can look at this code and I can say, oh, okay, so this BR gives it a line break that knocks it down there. Um, you notice uh, in the PDF, this next one, there aren't big spaces between these paragraphs. So I'm going to use line breaks actually here as well. So I'm going to start a paragraph. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put in the end of the paragraph. 
we often do that in web development where we put in one and then you know the other and then I'm going to put line breaks at the end of each of these lines and you'll notice that if I refresh here now I get I get this paragraph separated but then each line of the paragraph is just separated by one line line break it doesn't it's not double spaced in there so so that's how I'm going to continue um, so let's look at this and see okay so this needs to be um, in all caps and then the uh, asterisks should be up above right so right now um, we can put this in a paragraph and so and then inside of the paragraph to make the asterisks get offset up above because if we if we refresh it the asterisk is a little bit above but it's not really above the s it's it's just kind of aligned to the top of the s really the way that an asterisk should set in is to use um, a super positioning which is the SUP tag that makes it go up um, and you might see that like if you were writing an exponent or something like that also and if you notice what that did was that made the asterisk actually go a little bit above the line and it got shrunk down a little bit too so that it's more of like that asterisk like we expect to see there so we can put tags inside of HTML tags to structure even the content within them and where you decide to do your line breaks and everything is entirely up to you um, and you can use you know you want to customize your editor too so for example right now um, we have this little zoom map on if we don't like that which I actually am not a fan of that so if I scroll down I can I can uncheck show zoom ruler and then um, when I hit save it disappeared so that was cool um, you could also you might notice that um, here you notice lines don't cut off they just go straight across sometimes that's handy sometimes it's not if you wanted them to wrap you could enable soft wrap and then um, you would see that the lines would wrap and you see this sort of looks more like paragraphs like we expect so we'll go ahead and leave the soft wrap on and that might help us actually um, a little bit in laying things out the next thing that we run into is a photo and this photo is the integration at Ole Miss and we can see that one of these files is called integrated classroom.jpg and that's actually the image that we want to put there um, for this integration at Ole Miss so here where it says photo what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a paragraph in because a paragraph is a good way to contain content so I'm gonna wrap um, the photo and the caption um, I'm then gonna use an image tag and for the source I'm going to put in the name of the file so the source is integrated classroom .jpg. source here is an attribute that's an attribute of the image tag and attributes are always attribute name equals and then some value in quotes okay that's always the way that we write an attribute is attribute name equals some value in quotes so another attribute that the image tag can take is the alt attribute and that's used to give a textual description to the image so that folks who are using screen readers or you know search engines that are browsing the page they can know what the it is a picture of and so what we want to do is actually just say hey we want this this statement here about what this is integration at Ole Miss University we're going to put that into the alt tag there and so now we should see the image showing up on the screen um, when we refresh our page here and we do we see that image right there but notice that the text here is is out here off to the side of the image if we add a line break we could fix that so let's go ahead and put a line break after the image here and we save the file and then refresh and there we have that uh, you know that little caption is right there so the next thing we need is the actual link so if, if we click on the preview here and we go to this link I can uh, I can click it and it will open up 
uh, this file, and this is the source link for this image. So we want to make sure that we've included where we got this image from. So for this link, we're going to write an anchor tag to create it. And so first I'm just going to write the opening and closing tags. And that's just A for anchor and slash A um, for the closing tag. Then I'm going to use the href attribute and paste in the URL that I just copied out of the, uh, the browser tab. So this is where this link should point to. So that has saved. So if I refresh this now, then you can see that I have that link is there. And if I click it, then I go to the page that I want to go to, which is the source of that image. So this is an image from Wikimedia Commons. And that's all linked in there properly. So the next thing that I can do is uh, format the syllabus title, which should probably be an H2. And then I um, can just start putting in these paragraphs. And I'm just going to wrap these in P tags. And I want to just make my file as readable as possible. And I'm going to come back through to look again for other things that I need to maybe italicize or bold or whatever it is, right? So, oh, so actually I, I was messing up, I think, right? So if I look back at my, these are actually, should be list items. Oh, see, you can't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> okay, let me undo that work. So this is a, this is a list that needs to come together. So in order to make that come out, and, and here's what it's supposed to look like. See, it says factors of white and Negro schools may be equal, and then the history of the 14th Amendment is the, is the first item. So this right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, and, and it's numbered, so that's an ordered list. So we're going to do an opening and closing ordered list tags. And then I can do a fun thing where I can select all these lines. And then if I hit tab, it actually moves the start of these lines in all the way. So um, I'll redo that really fast for you. So if I select all of these lines, just normal selection, and then I hit tab, then it moves all these lines in. And so now I can make list items here. And um, I'm using my keyboard to navigate around because it's so much easier to do that. Um, and I can use the arrow keys and a combination of the command button or the, um, or the control button. And by using the arrow keys, and the command and control and occasionally clicking with my mouse, I can go through this really quickly and add these uh, list item tags. And you'll see how I can bounce to the beginning of the line and then go down and bounce to the end of the line. And so now that I've put in all of those list item tags, if I save that and uh, refresh here, I should have that list formatted properly. So. There's my picture and here's my list and it's all formatted properly. So that's excellent. So the next part of the page is opinion is the heading and then the Judge Warren's name is highlighted. So uh, let's go ahead and make that happen or is bolded I should say. Uh, so We'll set this opinion to be an H2 also. And then we will say, we'll make this a paragraph and we will also bold Chief Justice Warren's name. And we can't forget to close the paragraph tag. If we forget to close a tag, we get all kinds of weird things that will happen in our code. So now we go back here to check. And oh, look at that. We totally, for, we messed up something here. Oh, so see all that boldness? That's, something went wrong. So let's, let's take a look here. Oh. 
Oh, I see it now. It took me a couple tries, but that H2 should have been a slash H2 at the end to close that out. So that's, that's important for us. <laughs> um, okay, so now we can move along. Let's, let's just verify that that worked. There we go, that worked properly. So now we can move along and we can continue formatting. Um, this is all paragraphs going basically all the way down. Uh, and so I'm just going to go through that pretty quickly um, until I get down to justices of the court, okay? So I'll probably fast forward this a little bit and you can just watch me pop those in. Then we'll go back through and we'll look for other, other parts. Okay, so we are at Judges of the Court now, which I'm going to set up as another H2. Uh, and then let's check in on our, so Justices of the Court, then the picture comes, and we do the caption with the link, and then we do some lists down below. So, okay, let's, let's put that photo here then. First of all, let's do the paragraph tag. And then let's do an image tag with source equals, and this is the Warren Court JPEG file. And for alt, we will put this text in. It, it could be any text that helps describe it, you know. And then we'll put a line break there and a line break there and that should have us basically formatted down to that picture let's take a look so if we scroll all the way down here all right we can okay so we got to do the link and then we just have to do the end part and then we have to go through and do the detail work which is kind of significant in this assignment, but we'll we'll get there. So to find the link, again, what we do is we click the link out of here, it opens up, we'll copy that, and then um, come back here, and we're gonna do the anchor tag, and then we're gonna put in the href attribute and it's going to be equal to the URL that it links to so I mean that's how a link is constructed it's an anchor tag with an href attribute and the href attribute clicks or points to the file or web page that it links to so now if we refresh this we see our link and if we click that link we go right to where we're supposed to be so that is really good now we just need to fill in the front row left right back row left right and so those let's use h3s for the labels here again i'm using um my arrow keys to move me around um and then we need to put in um unordered lists because these, these lists use uh, the bullets, and so that is an unordered list. So I'm gonna put the unordered list wrappers, which by themselves, they don't do anything. If we, if we were to just refresh this, you notice that we just, we get the headings go in and they get their heading presentation, but because we didn't actually put any list items in, it doesn't do anything there. But once we put some list items in, then it will do something. So again, I'm going to select all of these lines and hit tab, and then that will knock them all over so that I can line them up prettier. Uh, being really pretty about your alignment in HTML is absolutely crucial. And I will make a list item around each of these uh, names. 
And I will do the same thing for the back row. And I'm, I'm once again using command and arrow to bounce to the very end of the line and to the beginning of the line. So that is uh, all there. Let's see, let's see how that looks. And we have our little list. Beautiful. So now um, it's a matter of going through and picking up all of these details, like all of these names of court cases get italicized. All of the asterisks need to be in a SUP or a super tag so that they get superpositioned up above the, uh, the regular letters in the line. Um, the, there's an ellipses that should be made into an ellipses. There's a M dash that should be made into an M dash. Um, all kinds of things that you could catch. Uh, the goal is to catch as much as possible, um, but, but you, you really got to use your eye and look really, really close. So for example, here's that M dash. And so I can use the ampersand M dash to put that in and the ellipses, these are the HTML entities, which those are a little bit of a stretch goal for us at this point in time, but um, may as well go ahead and, and drop them in. Um, we, uh, we really want to focus on, um, for example, finding all of the court cases. So for that, um, I'm going to actually go find the V dot. And what that's going to do is allow me to, uh, allow me to um, find those more easily and wrap them in a tag. Sometimes editors let you select and then wrap in tags, but this one doesn't, so <laughs> um, that's okay. So I would continue with this. I will continue with this and uh, I will catch up to you in just a few minutes. Okay, so I've gotten all of the italics in there. Um, I could also look for asterisks, and um, I've already got a soup around that one, and so I could put a soup around this one too. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that, and let's take a look at how this is looking now. And we see all of the italics went in properly. That looks great. We have our super positioning here. We've got a lot of things that come in. There's our sweet M dash, and somewhere up here is our uh, <laughs> ellipsis <laughs> somewhere. Um, okay, so uh, things are looking pretty good. Uh, oh, look. All right, so bonus points if you can figure out which HTML code that is supposed to be. I mistyped it. So, um, so let's let's say that this is all finished and that we're ready to finish our work here. Um, in order to do that, we will commit and push. So um, once again, we've only actually edited one file in this repository, but I'm going to right click on the name of the project up here, the, the entire project directory, and I'm going to go to git, and I'm going to say commit, and I want to make sure that that index.html is checked, and I'm going to say completed work for basic markup assignment. Now, do not feel bad about, you should commit every time you walk away from the computer. So if this assignment takes you a while, commit every time you leave it. You know, don't, don't just leave your work up here in the cloud where it might disappear right away. You know, um, this is a development environment. So you wanna always make sure to commit and push your work. And again, I'm gonna check this checkbox and say push committed changes to origin master. Um, so I'm gonna make sure that that happens. And I'm going to say commit and it was successful with its commit. It says that it pushed to origin. So if I go here and I go back to my main code view, I can see that my commit has gone in 12 seconds ago. So that's looking really good. I'm gonna to go to settings and I'm gonna scroll down to G GitHub pages section and I'm going to say deploy from the master branch and it will save that. 
I'm going to come down here and I'm going to right click on this address say copy link address and then I'm going to just click into it and it looks like it hasn't deployed yet but every once in a while it takes a little bit of time to deploy on github pages so there it goes now it's all there and ready so that took like 30 seconds or a minute or something but don't freak out too much right away um, I've seen it take even up to five or ten minutes sometimes but our page is basically together and basically works the way that we want it to and so this is the URL that we can submit for the deployed site and then we can go back here and this is the URL that you can submit for the repository. I always like to add that deployed URL here so that it's really easy for people when they come to the repository to know that I've deployed that and they can see it working in their web browser. Sometimes for some people it's hard to read code, right? You're, you're in week two, but still <laughs> sometimes hard to read code. Um, hard to remember that it's tough to read code, right? <laughs> um, so uh, that is everything for this assignment. Uh, you could go back and keep working and then when you finished working you would just right click go to git and say commit again and um, you would be able to commit um, your work right back no problem and uh, that's all so hopefully this was a fun project uh, it was uh, fun to do this walkthrough and I look forward to talking to you about it online or in lab um, whichever works for you alright take care everybody good luck developing bye